Emotet, one of the world's largest malware strains, is back. It's distributing new mal spam or malicious spam emails that are typically social engineering or phishing emails used to gain initial access on a target or victim computer. This is then used to be sold out on the dark web as part of an initial access broker campaign or just stage new malware like ransomware down the line or cryptocurrency or botnets or anything that comes of it. The cybersecurity industry started tracking this November 2nd, 2022, today as I'm recording this, and Cryptolamus, a very well-known security research group, comes out and tweets and says, Emotet is back in distro mode. As of 800 UTC, E4 began spamming, and as of 930 UTC, E5 began spamming again. Looks like Ivan is in need of some cash again, so he went back to work. Context, Ivan is the head operator, you know, Emotet as a human first name, right? Be on the lookout for directly attached XLS files and zipped and password protected XLS. This is one out of however many he begins to tweet. And he's shouting out to FFF Forward, uh, the analyst that we see out on about on the Twitterverse and other members of the Cryptolimus Research Group that were tracking this. Uh, super cool to see some of these already out and about. The analyst offers this hash, or the SHA-256 hash for the XLS file that they are tracking. And this is called a bill address change if you open it up in Excel. XLS is an Excel format. And it's super duper interesting to see Emotet using XLS or XLSM or XLM. I'm not getting the acronym wrong, but that is old school Excel 4.0, I think is the right number there, macros. They are like macros embedded within the cells of an Excel spreadsheet. And they do an interesting thing here that I do want to dig into in just a moment, but you can see sort of that banner here and hopefully we'll be able to play with it super duper soon. This is online. If anyone is interested in tracking it, you can grab a sample on the Malware Bazaar and others. There are some just as well out and about. And you can see some interesting folks chatting about this. Looks like Will Dorman's already jumped in the scene, David Ledbetter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, tracking more of this thread, you can see more hashes that have been seen out in the wild. If anyone is tracking with a virus total enterprise subscription, you can might be able to track those down. I still don't have a virus total enterprise subscription. So hey, VT, if you're listening, sponsor, I don't know, please, maybe, hey. I'm not all caught up on the lingo here with the cool kids E4 versus E5. I'm assuming these are different factions or groups of Emotet and maybe their, I don't know, partnership programs that they tend to use. But these are hashes related to samples put out by E4. I have seen this one and uh, the E5, these are uh, their own hashes that they're out and about. They say, once Ivan gets going here, we might see more new stuff and tactics different for these initial access infections. The editor silent docs are pretty ineffective with the newer office defaults. We'll give more updates if anything changes. Got some good memes. Hey, uh, checking in the XLM macros. Uh, what year is it? 2022 here. Good laughs on that. I'm digging the memes. Emotet is bringing back these XLS payloads. Malware bites jumping into the fight. Interesting tidbit from Inquest here. They mentioned, hey, this ribbon that they're including at the very top of the Excel sheet does look like an official Microsoft yellow ribbon, or at least masquerading as that. Using some bash and JQ, uh, you are actually able to carve out some of the interesting domains that it might be using here. I think that is worthwhile for any folks playing with Inquest. Max Maluden also jumping in. I'm very excited to dive into some of these. Uh, I do have a sample that hopefully we'll get a chance to play with, and uh, you can see some of the processes that are spawned here and what they use for persistence, looking like uh, run key in the registry and uh, IP info for some uh, commands you might be able to key off of for detection. I do think there is a super good one here that I think is worth noting, and I think something that I kind of want to play with here, actually pointed out by uh, Bleeping Computer reporting on this, uh, Emotet and Ivan might have not decided to abandon these macro vectors just yet, despite the fact that there's been a whole lot of chatter on Microsoft Office disabling macros by default. I don't even remember where we left off on that, because I know they pivoted back and forth here. Uh, interesting note, placing files into these locations automatically bypasses protections put into place for updated versions of Office. And if you actually read the banner here. I don't know how well you can see it, but in accordance with the requirements of your security policy, to display the contents of the document, you need to copy this file to the following folder and run it again. And they list these versions of Microsoft Office and then give you a templates directory inside of C program files under Microsoft Office that will not be guarded by whatever Microsoft Office protections, not letting you deal with macros. Bleeping Computer zooms in on this a little bit more, uh, noting that, hey, this little prompt here, that social engineering trick just at the very top of the file, it says when this document, this XLS, this Excel sheet is launched from those folders, it bypasses the Microsoft Office protected view security feature, allowing macros to execute without any warning. You can see here in this picture, it is a Microsoft Office trusted location by default. 
And in typical Emotet style, the macros will download the specific DLLs that they use for further exploitation based off of compromised sites, typically WordPress. Uh, then those are downloaded, those DLLs will be slapped into randomly named folders under your local app data environment variable and executed using Reg Server 32. Again, hey, some command line low bins you might be able to key off of for detection usage. Here they showcase a uh, Reg Server 32.exe process running, uh, and this is probably checking it out with a hey, process explorer or anything. Uh, uh, you can tell the command line that they run is including that app data local path, random folder, and that DLL name. One cool thing to know that FF Forward and the analyst offers is that they are not dropping any additional post exploitation payloads or any other C2 servers running up like Cobalt Strike or any other malware like ransomware or cryptocurrency miners. But uh, as it's continuing to cast a wide net, this will very likely change, right? It's a matter of getting all of this initial access on machines that you can compromise and then later do whatever damage you'd like. Now that that rambling banter is over, let's get to the fun stuff and let's see if we can go ahead and create our own macro enabled document that we might be able to validate and test if that simple, hey, uh, actually triggering these macros without having the prompt uh, will work for us. I just wanna see if those file locations actually do what I've heard, because that would be kind of neat and a worthwhile tidbit. So if you are in Excel, uh, we can right click on the sheet that we have created here. And if we go ahead and hit insert, you'll then be prompted with what you wanna insert. We can go ahead and start to create a Microsoft Excel 4.0 macro. I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. And now you'll see it's created that new sheet for me, macro one. I'll go ahead and set a equals exec, in which case I'll go ahead and be able to run a function here. And let me go ahead and just simply use a, another benign payload, right? Super simple, super small. Let's exec calc.exe. Now, if we want that to automatically run as we open up our macro, we need to change this, or excuse me, we w if we want this macro to automatically run as we open up this document, this XLS file, we need to change this to underscore or auto underscore open. I'll hit enter on that, and then we'll go ahead and save this actually as a location inside of our desktop, and we'll just call this, I don't know, uh, POC, super small, and we'll change this to an Excel macro enabled workbook. I'll hit save, and there we go. Uh, and if we wanted to be super duper stealthy with our super tiny, small proof of concept example here, we can change the text color to this to be white, and that way that'll blend in. Uh, and we could actually go ahead and right click and hide that macro. So there, now we're super stealthy, have a, a totally malicious payload for just popping open the calculator application. And if I were to close this window, now if I were to reopen our simple POC XLS file, XLSM file, right? You'll get the security warning in the ribbon here. Note that big yellow that looks like, uh, I mean, in this case, it is the official Microsoft ribbon, but I would need to click enable content for my calculator to go ahead and pop open for me. Now note, if I close this, and let me see if I can do this again, hopefully, no, 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 I'm gonna have to uh, maybe clear that one more time. Uh, is there a w quick way to do that? Maybe I'll make a copy of it and let's see if it will let me uh, treat that as a new file. There we go, macros have been disabled. Uh, so we'll kill the old one and just rename that. Now, bear with me here. Consider that we have downloaded this file as an email attachment from some social engineering ploy. It's an address change or whatever file, uh, but we're just getting that ribbon that tells us, hey, go ahead and move this into the templates folder of your program files. So if we were a silly victim, let's say we could go ahead and cut this and then move it, opening up our file explorer here. Let's go ahead and bring this to our C drive where I could move into the program files where we would expect to see the Microsoft Office install location. And there it is, Microsoft Office here. If I go ahead and open that up, move into that root directory that was referenced, we can move into the templates directory. And if I place this here, yep, okay, I guess in my case, because it's under the C drive and program files, we will need admin permissions. Eh, we can go along with the ploy. I will fire up my new puck and let's see doesn't prompt me to enable content. I don't have that security warning. My macro, my malicious payload here, just firing off the calculator will execute. Interesting trick. Here's the gimmick here. This is what uh, the bleeping computer screenshot was showcasing. If you move into the options, and I believe the trust center, if we go into the trust center settings, we might be able to see the external content or uh, file block settings. Where is it here? Ah, right there at the top, trusted locations. Warning, all these locations are treated as trusted sources for opening files. If you change or add a location, make sure that the new location is secure. And note, exactly where I placed my file, 
exactly where the victim would place their file, it will go ahead and allow macros to run without prompting and without requiring them to enable content. Now that was fine and dandy, but we wanna get into the real stuff here. So I do have an example sample, that's fun to say, uh, with the SHA-256 hash that we saw first from that E4, Emotet 4 faction group, whatever the heck. Uh, and Virus Total is actually tracking this with boom, a pretty bloody 38 out of 62 vendors and sandboxes flagging this as malicious here. Uh, this actually came through a Defender alert from where we were tracking it. Windows Defender or Microsoft Defender did track this. Um, and I'm curious, do we have that listed here? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's Microsoft with a Trojan downloader just like that. And this was added just recently, a couple minutes ago with the latest payment.xls. We can see some community notifications here, folks saying, hey, this is Emotet as of November. November 2nd, uh, and a super cool virus total graph where you might be able to see a little bit more of what's happening where between all the indicators of compromise, uh, at least the threat intel to track different groups and domains that it's using here. And I do have this downloaded and ready for us to play with. I moved it into a directory called Emotet. And there you can see here, I have this big long zip file for that hash. Let me go ahead and unzip this. Uh, that password is the norm infected. And uh, now we have this file of EF our SHA-256 hash. So as you note, running file on this just tells you it is a composite document file running for Windows, creating applications Microsoft Excel. I am gonna drop this into my Windows machine so I can poke and play with it within Excel native. Uh, before I do that, I wanna make sure that I can go ahead and disconnect from the internet. Uh, you know, just for safekeeping, right? All right, so let's go ahead and extract this thing. We'll put it to sample, and I guess we can slap it in the desktop. Password is infected. And Defender's tracking it right on the money. I dig it. We should probably nerf Defender for a little bit if we wanna play. So before I extract this thing, let's go ahead and just create a sample directory where we could go ahead and keep our malware out of Defender's prying eyes. Uh, let me go ahead and add an exclusion. Add or remove exclusions. Yep, 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 yep. Let's do a simple folder here for my desktop sample directory. That should be set. Now we can go ahead and extract this. Let me go ahead and view the file name extensions here. And uh, here, let's make sure we can rename this to sample.xls. Open that thing up. And ooh, this is where we're at here. Check it out. Here is the security warning that is real legitimate Windows, and here is the faked relaunch required in accordance with the requirements of your security policy, open this in the templates folder. Now, if I kill this, if I just delete that, can I go ahead and turn everything to red? Are there any cells in this page that have any data here? Let me change this to nothing, or at least reset the fill. And again, I'll change everything to red. Not seeing anything, so let me see if I can go ahead and unhide some sheets here. And ooh, looks like there are multiple sheets that might be hidden here. Let's go ahead and unhide all of them. And let's take a look at what we have here. Can I modify any of these? Oh yeah, they're all protected. I'll have to unprotect every sheet. Ooh, it needs a password. Uh, that, I don't know. Hmm, how about all the others? Yep, every single one of them. Got to take a password. Ooh, one does not have one. Sheet six. Does this have any macros here and there and everywhere? Scrolling around, I don't see any. Is that the original one that I was in? No, that's just plain old sheet. Okay, so first step is trying to figure how we might be able to edit these if we can, or even just, can I copy and paste out of this? I Ooh, there's some stuff in there. All right, so let me do some quick Googling, learn on the fly how to unprotect uh, an Excel worksheet without the password. This article suggests another kind of silly method and that if you try to brute force the password with your own VBA code, uh, because Excel's worksheet protection is based on a simple encryption algorithm, there's basically a pretty limited key space and you might just be able to brute force or hammer passwords to see if you could go ahead and unlock or unprotect a specific sheet. Uh, looks like if we just go ahead and insert a module given a specific sheet, then you could slap in this silly password breaker subroutine and let's see if it'll go ahead and determine something. If we go ahead and create a module given a sheet, we could just try and run it and then fingers crossed, it'll actually maybe get something. I guess we don't know. Uh, worth a try, let's dive in. I think I do need to get into that code developer section. So I think Alt F1, Alt F11 is what I need. And then sheet one is one that needs to be 
unprotected, right? So let's get back to that and let's right click on our sheet one to insert a module. Let's slap this in and then, uh, I don't know, try it out. We can run sub user form and just let this thing go. Uh, I'll pause and oh, it looks like it actually found something here. Let me try and write that down. Okay, I've got that in my clipboard here. Let's see if I can actually go back to the sheet and try and unprotect it. Oh, oh it actually theoretically already did. Can I edit stuff in here? Yeah, and all the text is white currently. Let me try and change all of this to red. And there we go. Now we've got some stuff at least present in our Excel sheet. Uh, a little messy, and I'm sure this is all gonna end up being kind of concatenated to actually try and run code. But let's do that with all the others. Okay, so we have stuff to work with now, but the question is where would this start and how would this all come together? Uh, XLM macros do some weird thing where they operate like running things left to right and top down. I, I might have that order wrong, uh, but I'm super curious, how would this all be put together? Alrighty, I've spent a whole lot of time trying to uh, de-obfuscate and play with it, uh, and I don't think I just have it in me right now to kind of go a little bit further. Uh, the quick and easy XLM de-obfuscator tool I did not have much luck with, however, I was playing with it. So I figured, you know what, we might as well wrap this video up before it gets way too long, and I'm just fumbling against the wall over and over and over again. Uh, I would probably tie this all together, if I may, with the story that Bleep the Computer has shared. They were covering the same sort of conversation that we were tracking on Twitter uh, from Kutu Lamus and the other folks that were diving into it, uh, the analyst and FF Forward, uh, showcasing this again banner where you're playing with that macro location, getting into the trusted default location so that macros do not need permission to run. They will just automatically run it. And you could explore and play with this just as well as we have done. And actually, before we wind this thing down, uh, maybe it would be kind of fun to light off some fireworks, uh, detonate this thing, and show it really in action so you can see some of those. Uh, I'll fire up Process Explorer so we can see this thing kick off and ideally see some of the process chains. Uh, we can kill Microsoft Edge because that's going to eat up a whole lot of space. Blech, look at all that blood. Um, and then we'll use the raw original sample. And just for funsies, let's go ahead and put it right where it said it should go. Uh, I'll slap into the program files, Microsoft Office, root, templates, and uh, <laughs> there's our old POC, but let's try it there and let's see this thing blow. All right, well, let's try this thing. I'll fire it up. Now macros should be allowed to run and there we go. Look at that. You can see Defender jumping right into action. Hey, virus and threat protection found. Uh, you can see the OXNV1.OOCCXX failed to load. Uh, and then hey, Defender's getting in the middle of it. I don't know if you caught it, but I did see Excel.exe pop up in RedServer.exe. And I, I'm sure if I had hey, like TCP dump running or something, uh, or TCP view, it would showcase us trying to reach out to those domains. That might've been kind of slick. Maybe it's worth popping up in Wireshark or something fun to pull out those IOCs, but we could do that just as well. Hey, digging through some of the uh, URLs that were present or even something as stupid as strings. Um, but that is it in action. Defender kicking in, swooping to save the day. Um, and theoretically, I, can we actually see this in local app data? I know, Defender, I know, I know. You're good, man. Randomly named folder, check it out. Fuh-tuxt-pukherm. And there is our OOZP.dll uh, that we would go ahead and explore for a little bit, but Defender is certainly not happy with it. We could pry that thing open, get a chance to play with it, um, but <laughs> I think Defender is, is uh, more than happy to, to swoop in. Fun stuff. Traditional, typical uh, emotet trade craft here. I feel bad I've been rambling for a bit, but I hope that's just a little info for you. If anyone wanted to explore and poke at it, you're more than welcome to. You should find samples online. And uh, Emotet is back in action. So take that for what it's worth. Keep your ears to the ground and we'll see what's coming next. But I hope you enjoyed a little bit of a tinker and experimentation with some of those XLS or XLM macros uh, and seeing where those trusted locations might just let the macro cruise right on by without permission if you can social engineer the victim well enough. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next video.